right, gang, I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, a lot of you guys keep asking, so how do you get this or that into your boat? How do you store it all? How do you organize it all? Let's run through, with the Viking Reload, how I load all this gear down. I carry quite a bit, but I'm one of those independent types. I like to go alone. I got a few friends that I like to go with, but like today, I went out by myself. I did 17 miles, and if you're out there in the middle of the day, five miles off the beach, and you get, a, get yourself in a situation, you have to be able to get yourself out. So let's run through real quick what I do. So let's start with what's on the front. We've got this bungee uh, system, and I put two things on the front. I put my gaff, I made it out of a golf club, and I flip it and put it in there. And you can see right here, it stays out of the way, so I can access my hatch, open and close it. I can put it up there into the, the rib if I want to. I typically run it to the outside because my measuring board, and I'm in, a, I'm in kayak wars, it's a fishing contest. So I have to be able to show measurements of my fish. So you all have seen it. It's got a backing that stands up and Velcros together. It will come apart. And I basically hold this end in my lap. And that end, I support it with my foot so that the fish stays kind of swiveled in He's, he's not going to go anywhere, and that way you can bend the tail to the longest point, get your picture down the, down the board, and you can, you can get proof for what you caught. So, it's the best bump board for that length that I've ever found, because it floats. If you drop it overboard, it floats, it's big, it's white, it's easy to find. So, my recommendation, stick your name on it. I did have a 50-inch float board fall off my kayak once. And before I got home at the end of that trip, a fishing guide from eight miles further offshore found my board, called the number, knew who I was, he'd seen my videos. So I got my board back. So what I do with it here is I'm gonna run it through the front bungee and a couple of the other bungees. Okay, so you can see it's, it's pretty together but it's in front of my hatch, and this is where I store a lot of my fish. I need that up out of the way, so it will move forward to a point. Now you can get in the hatch. So what's in your front hatch, Professor? Number one, there's a retainer strap on it. Thank you, Viking Kayaks. That is very smart because I've dropped it a few times. It does not float retainer strap will save you. So I have a fish bag. I can access it. I can put my fish in it. And I'm going to pull this out. Just put it out of the way. You can see there's a large hatch area up there. Other things I carry. A second gaff. One of these days I'm going to catch an 80 pound cobia and when I do I'm going to need two gaffs. So I carry two gaffs. And I've once or twice I've dropped my gaff and lost it. Fish yanked it out of my hand or whatever. And if you have a spare in the boat with you, that's that's handy. The other two things I've got is back here I've got a car wash sponge. And back here I've got a hand pump that I can pump out the the hull if I ever spring a leak. This hull is very well made. I have not had leaks with it, but you better plan for it if you're going to be out there by yourself miles from shore. So if I ever do have a leak, I have had kayaks that took on water, took on quite a bit of water. And to be able to pump it out is big. You can't underestimate the worth of having equipment to, to evacuate the water. So the other thing I use in the front is I have this Railblazer mount and Railblazer is really well thought out. It will swivel 
got enough pressure not to uh, come undone or move when you don't want it to. At the other end of the stick, it will swivel here and it can swivel here and it can swivel here. So you've got a lot of options. So I basically set it up out to the side looking at me here. So that's my view. I can see it. It's looking right at me. It can see outside the water. So when I have a fish down here, the camera can see it. it makes for good videos. Um, my tackle pod. I've got a fish finder mounted on my tackle pod. And so what I carry in my tackle pod, <laughs> I carry a lot of junk. I'm like, it's like an old lady's purse. I got peanuts. I have a lot of jigging spoons. Um, on a good day, if the fish are really tearing them up and they're eating the swivels, I'll go through seven or eight jigging spoons. So I carry more than that. And just hope that the fish don't tear me up. Carry my camera, an extra set of gloves, sunscreen, a pair of dikes, strong wire cutters. Yeah, they got a little bit of rust on them, but these are hardened steel and they will work really well. I carry some Rain-X. I do now. Um, Y'all have seen on some of my videos the lenses get all foggy and dirty. It's hot, it's steamy out there, and when you get fish slime on your hands, everything gets dirty. Pr mostly the lenses. Um, I carry a buff, so if I need to cover up, I can. I have a case for my sunglasses. So when I'm leaving in the morning, it's early, it's early light. I don't need sunglasses yet. Put them in the case, put it inside, and it's uh, protected. Also pack a Snickers, because I like Snickers. And then I've got three tackle bags. I've shown you on a different video how I use the tackle bags. So I stuff three of them in there. And then to power my fish finder, I have a, I just call it a deer feeder battery. It's a 12 volt battery. I put some foam around it to secure it. Drilled a small hole through the lid. No, it's not totally waterproof, but it's inside my tackle pod. It doesn't have to be totally waterproof. So it can go in all the way to the front. My other gear can go in there. And everything is stowed. I know where it is. I can get to it. Now, seal it up. We're good to go. All right, so got my paddle. Paddle is leashed. Why have a leash? Go back and look at the day that I borrowed Todd's stealth and the carabiner decided to slip itself loose and my paddle was floating away from me and a fish was pulling me the wrong way. I had to jump out and grab the kayak and swim it back to the paddle. So leash and keep those carabiners in good shape. I, I like the stainless steel carabiners if I can get them. Um, my life jacket, my PFD, has always got a pair of scissors on a retractor. I'm an employee of Del Mar College, the Vikings, so it's a Viking, why not? So I've got plenty of these retractable pieces. So I have braid scissors that I keep on there. I also keep a good pair of pliers so that I can get my fish loose. It's got wire cutters. Don't cut hooks with it, they will shatter. That's why I carry the dikes. Um, but I've got wire cutters and that works. So if you're working with a leader and you gotta cut the wire, cuts the wire just fine. Also, a lot of you guys are asking, what kind of gloves do you wear? MaxiFlex, cut proof but you have to know your size. I know I'm an XL, I'm a size, I'm about a size nine, but in this it's XL. And they say cut proof, they're not completely cut proof. I don't want them completely cut proof because y'all have seen me stick, or y'all have seen fish stick hooks in me and you have to cut the glove away so you can see what you're doing and get that hook out. So, sorta of cut proof, that's the best. Okay, something else that Viking on the reload does is they've got three hatches, they're waterproof, and in the center hatch 
I used to carry a separate waterproof container for my keys, my wallet, my my phone. Now all of that stuff is able to fit inside this this cup. So it'll come out, but it's nice and waterproof. It's always dry unless I open it during rough seas. Try not to open it during rough seas. You've got a couple more back here. And it's it's really tight because I sealed it when it was cool or when it was hot now it's cooler and it's created a vacuum but I keep extra snacks um, when I go fly fishing or when I take a fly rod I'll put my flies and my leader material in there and it's easy to access it's not in the way of everything else it doesn't get tangled up and then back here my rods have got gimbals on them they're soft. You can tell I just came back from fishing and washed everything down. But, well, I sort of washed everything down. I got dirty, dirty reels still. So, I put my four reels. Yes, I take four. Why? Well, I troll two. And what I do to troll is I stick them in there. And so, with seven foot rods, my two baits are running. 15 feet apart and then I've got my little <laughs> my little Sienna 2500 it caught a 42 inch king today good girl and I've got my new little SGN I love this little reel it's so tiny but this booger's a beast it's got great drag 375 yards of 30 um, just a super reel and then my uh, chill pod. A lot of us in Texas, in the U.S., in the warmer climates have all had a similar issue. Why do you call it a chill pod? It's not insulated. You can't keep ice in it. Well, you got to remember, this stuff's made in New Zealand where the water's cold and the weather's cold. You need a place for your fish to chill out so the sharks won't eat them. So it's a chill pod. So what I did is I went through and created... A Texas version this lid is hollow and so in the back I drilled some quarter inch holes I filled it with some expandable foam cleaned it off I went to Walmart and bought some spray cans from the spray paint section it's called plastid plastid dip uh, it sprays on like paint and it creates a plastic layer over whatever you spray it on so I sprayed my whole chill pod white it was black door and dark blue I sprayed it white it stays much cooler and then I went to Walmart and I got some workout pads that lay on the floor that you can do your I don't know weightlifting or whatever with so I took it and I'll make another video to show you the details but you notice on this chill pod it's a flat section and a flat section and a flat section and the floor is flat so I cut out pieces of that foam to fit laid them all in there to be sure they would fit and then I got uh, contact cement got it all over one surface and stuck that that stuff on there and of course I would flip it upside down so that it gravity wasn't pulling it away but anyway I created myself a a true chill pod now it chills in the ice and melting ice sense of the word um, on that chill pod make sure that you have it tightened down I don't like loose leashes and stuff laying around so I kind of put it out of the way that way and then over here I've done a demo on rig hooks it's also based on a carbon golf club and an aluminum 1 8 inch rod um, and then the rigging for it is inside of here so today I went to an area full of oil platforms and I wanted to be able to hook on to the oil platforms. If you're paddling 17 miles, I don't care who you are, you're going to get tired, you're going to want to rest for a while. And it holds you in place so that you can vertical jig off the bottom and find live bait, blue runners, moonfish, whatever you're going to use. So it allows you a smart, easy way, does not damage the rigs, and it folds up. I put it under the bungee, this end hooks on the back handle, and it's out of your way. It's, it's everything you want, not a bunch of junk you don't want. 
So that's basically from front to back. That's what I do with my kayak. That's how I load it. Um, the two cameras, I showed you the front camera. When I go through the surf, I'll put it in towards the middle. And I might even pull this off and I can store it inside. And that way it's just a stick. So if I hit big waves on the way out and this gets flopped around backwards, I can just kick it back to the front and keep moving and no damage done. In the back, I've got mounts. I've got my rod holder mounts. The rod holders are here. I'm using the Railblazer rod tubes now because I like them. They're very simple. Will they bend? Yeah, they'll flex a little bit, but I've run pretty heavy drags on some big hooks with big lures, and they may flex a little bit, but easy peasy, they don't break. So in the back, I've also got a Railblazer mount with a camera pole and this one you can loosen it and it'll flex back and forth i like it to be straight up though if i ever hook a sailfish put it out there and you can see 160 degrees or whatever it is hopefully you get to see it jump 